Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. Again, go to my website, tolltutor.net, for more information. Twitter, Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Toll Tutor, Pinterest, Neil Haley, and Google Plus, Neil Haley. And I'm excited uh, always when I get an opportunity to interview a uh, WWF and WWE star and tough em up, but all these other things. And now he's doing some work with schools. So I'm excited to welcome the program, former Tough Enough champion and WWE star, Daniel Pewter. Daniel, how are you? And thanks for calling, man. I'm perfect, brother. How are you? Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, fa fantastic. It's great that you're on the program. I was doing some research on you, Daniel. I was a Tough Enough fan in a way. I don't know if I'd say a fan just because of former professional wrestler that I was, and I watched the show. But I had to go back and do some research on you to see the situation, that I guess, that you're most famously known for with your wrestling Kurt Angle in a shoot fight. So uh, you were part of this whole MMA thing and stuff like that before you were a professional wrestler then? You were in mixed? Yeah. Yes, that's right. I was, uh, I was 20 and 0 amateur and then uh, 1 and 0 professional. So I, I, was, I was training from the age of 16 years old for, for mixed martial arts. And, and, uh, and then uh, amateur wrestling, I started at 12 years old. Uh, so it was, it was a good, good run, good career. And uh, then I went into pro wrestling. Very interesting going into the whole pro wrestling thing, Daniel, and uh, the process of the tough enough. That's interesting. A lot of the people that you ran into, I might have ran into them in the business as well. So first, when you decided, hey, I'm going MMA to, to, to be a pro wrestler, what did people think of it that were in the MMA? Were they thinking, are you kidding, are you kidding me, Daniel? You're going to be part of that? You know, it's interesting because there's a lot of overlap in the, in the, you know, the different sports. Um, and I think a lot of MMA fighters, as kids, they watch pro wrestling. Uh, so, you know, it was just it was just funny. Some some guys, you know, they they would they would be like, dude, what's going on here? And then other guys, you know, back in the day in Japan, a lot of the guys that were MMA fighters would actually do pro wrestling too. Really? Um, like uh, my old my old tag team partner Shinsuke Nakamura in uh, Japan, he uh, he did both. And, and and what's funny was is I got to wrestle with him. What was that? About four years ago in Japan, uh, we were tag okay. team partners, and he uh, he trained at my gym uh, when I was like 17, 18 years old with a, with one of my coaches, Brian Johnston, for a fight. So I knew him 10 years before I actually got to tag team with him. So it's pretty amazing how how it, it you know it, it it works hand in hand. I think a lot of people don't understand this is a question because I'm a former professional wrestler, is that I, when I was in Germany, ended up having to shoot fight somebody because the person was not letting me get over in front of the crowd because it was his hometown in Germany. So I had to take him down, stretch him, and put him down saying, are we ready to get started and all that stuff because you're not doing, you're blowing spots and stuff in the match. So a lot of times people don't understand, even in the WWE or Pro wrestling, at times, matches don't work out the way they have to work. And if you don't know how to, I guess, let's say the word stretch somebody and take them down, you could be embarrassed in a match, couldn't you? Correct. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I was the toughest uh, in WWE, you know, but, but all together, you know, I mean, when I was there, yeah, there's some tough guys like Hardcore Holly who was coaching me, and, and he's mm -hmm. a great guy. And, and there's, you know, Kurt Angle and... And these guys are really good, but there, there's a difference between being tough and technical. Right. And if you're a gold medalist, you know, yes. uh, and and I key lock you, and you don't see it coming, then uh, you don't even know what it is. You don't know how to defend against it. It's all technique, right? I mean, yes. it doesn't matter exactly. how tough yeah. you are. I'm going to snap your arm off. Right. The headbangers did that to me. I don't know, Daniel, if you knew I'm six foot ten. Well, it was 310 pounds back in the time, and I worked, the, they were the Spiders in the Ozark Mountain Wrestling, and basically before they became the Headbangers, and if I screwed up a spot or something happened, they would take me down, especially Chaz, he would not take, up, take anything, he was an amateur wrestler, and he, he put me in a, in a shoot hole and say, now yeah. let's get started, let's, get, let's be real. And a lot of the guys down south, they would put people in shoots, especially the amateur wrestlers. So I think that people understand that you get in the professional wrestling ring. That's why you're saying there's this differences with MMA and that, except we know who's going to win in pro wrestling. But at times, it is not fake. You're getting beat up. You're getting hurt. And people really are not – if you do things wrong, you're going to end up getting hurt in the ring, right? 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, yeah. with the pro wrestling, I actually got hurt more than than uh, MMA fight. I, I never went to the hospital right. once in MMA. In, in pro wrestling, I, I I went to the hospital a few times. And so to be able to see the abuse you actually draw, like in practice, MMA fighting, mm -hmm. you get you get more abuse than actually in a fight because it's right. that more consistent. But by the time you're in a fight, you've already gotten beat up so much, and, and it's that consistency of just getting pounded that your body is more used to it. Um, but in pro wrestling, same thing. It's it's abuse, but but it's more abuse. You're getting dropped. Um, you're getting people landing on you. You're, I mean, you're 200 and you know whatever pound person. Most of them are you know 200 yes. or over, and you're you're falling consistently on your back or on people. Yeah, like that's not normal. No, it's not normal. Or taking falls in the concrete, or going through a table, or taking chair shots to the head. All those different things. So. Can, and I, I know because of our audience specifically, and I saw the YouTube, I have to ask you a question about specifically telling us the story before the second segment. Promise you it's going to be all about uh, your nonprofit. But uh, the experience that is a YouTube sensation of you and Kurt Angle once you won Tough Enough and you had a shoot fight with Kurt. Can you kind of take us tor towards and tell us a little about that? Especially I know I could show this a lot of my wrestling friends because... I can ask definitely the right questions in this process. Tell, take us through this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so you know, we, we started off each individual segment on Tough Enough was completely different. Uh, some of them, they gave us a little bit of information and said, you have to dress this way, you got to do this, or, you know, whatever it was. And then, you know, they just, you know, threw us in situations. Uh, and, and it was great because it made that kind of stuff reality makes good tv yeah. from, you know a lot of the time because people definitely if you plan part of it you know scripted mm -hmm. reality it's unbelievable um so we ran sprints then we ate pasta and drank milk and then we ran more sprints and yeah um then they said time to go and the music our music goes on so we walk out to the ring and i'm thinking to myself okay so they've been filming us all day running sprints you know eating food and running more sprints what is going to go on here? So Kurt Angle comes out and he, he does this challenge thing for us. And we do this up down competition and I'm doing a perfect. And, and then they, they kick everybody out except for myself and Chris Meraki. And they kick me out because the, the ref thinks that the blonde guy, uh, somebody told him to kick the blonde guy out and we're both blonde. So he, he puts me out and then Kurt wrestles Chris Meraki. Uh -huh. So it was just interesting. And, and he breaks a few of his ribs. And uh, it's just interesting to be able to see, um, you know, how Kurt then, after he wrestles Chris, he looks at me and, and he goes, hey, you know, anybody else want to get in the ring with me? And I raise my hand and everybody else is like, oh, my gosh, dude, you're crazy. <laughs> and so, what, what you know, I mean, you can tell really the, the, the like, the, the spirit or how tough somebody is when somebody just gets whooped on by somebody and, and – you know, a bunch of people get an opportunity and they're like, heck no, I do not want to look like it, you know? Right. And so I was like, I'm going in there. And, you know, I, I caught him in the corner. He, he was much stronger than I was. Mm -hmm. um, he's an Olympic gold medalist. Go figure, you right, know? Exactly. And so, so, you know, I caught him in the corner. You know, what I'm good at is I'm good at catching people, you know? And, and it's just, uh, it's a chess game. Yes. And so I figured, I, I didn't go in there with a game plan. I just said, hey, I'm going to go in there and wrestle him. I'll see how well I can do. But they, the, the rules were no striking. Right. And so um, that, was, that was the deal. The, the ref then, when I was uh, on one of my shoulder blades, um, saved Chris, or saved uh, Kurt right. from, uh, from, from me snapping his arm off. And a few months ago, Kurt admitted to it. You know, about a year ago, uh, the ref admitted to it. So to be able to see, yeah. you know, 10 years later, right, you know, it's just funny that, that uh, we could have done a huge thing on that in WWE, but they didn't understand or recognize that I actually caught him, which was which was crazy. This see this Daniel, if this was ten years later. Think of CM Punk. Think of the smaller wrestlers now. They probably could have done this as an angle, ran a big deal for a long time. Money between you two, that because the wrestling, Correct. the business has changed even more. From then, that was still into the awe of big, gigantic wrestlers to now where you're seeing people that could be off the streets that look like they could be off the streets beat guys that look like they are, you know, completely gigantic. So that's interesting 
the point and then that they finally admit this in certain things and who knows daniel because i was also watching on youtube that you're making a comeback into pro wrestling when you, i've already known this in certain ways in pro wrestling you never stop as a pro wrestler i've made two comebacks after germany and uh, i'm 42 years old now and who knows if i ever get back in the ring again but it's in your blood and if somebody said that there's a pro wrestling match right down the street right now i'd be in the ring that's the funny part about it, is it just stays in your blood for sure, Daniel. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, definitely. I agree. You know, it's, it's, I love the entertainment. I love the fans. Um, you build really good relationships with uh, some of the wrestlers, and, and you have a lot of fun. You know, you, you, you can make people really, uh, you know, really, you know, entertained and, and, and excited about life just because they look up to you. And, and that's really what we're working on with with our aspect, my life, my power entertainment is, you know, really bringing in the, you know, some top athletes and entertainers to, um, really be those role models for, for our future generation. That's fantastic. So when we get back, we're going to go more into that, Daniel, uh, we're talking to Daniel Pewter, WWE MMA star. And, uh, I think I didn't answer the question about the whole back in the ring thing, but maybe that has something to do with what, your nonprofit is. So when we get back, you're watching the Neil Haley Show and listening to the Total Celebrity Show. And we'll be back in just a moment. My love of books goes way, way back, and that's why working here at the Bethel Park Library is such a perfect fit for me. I remember um, fond memories of my childhood um, reading to my younger sister um, some of our favorite books like The Pokey Little Puppy um, or uh, Mickey Mouse's Picnic. As part of our bedtime routine, we would be on our bed you know, before we fell asleep reading chapter books together and all taking turns uh, sharing chapters from Little House on the Prairie or Anne of Green Gables. As we got older and we were able to read it on our own, we would still read aloud together and we would share chapters. We'd take turns when pass the book around. I stress that to families today, the importance of reading aloud and sharing books as a family because not only does it create those wonderful memories that you always have, but it's so very fundamental um, to the reading process and to the learning process. Picture books have always been my favorite, so it Again, working here at the library is just uh, wonderful and it's the perfect fit because now I get to share those um, happy memories and I get to share the awesome picture books uh, with kids and kids of all ages. Um, I love doing shows on BPTV such as Book Nook because again I'm sharing my love of books with kids at home and hopefully encouraging them to come in and then check those books out. And it does work. I've seen it happen. I love when kids run in here you know, the next morning and say, I just watched you on TV last night. Or when a parent is with that child saying, hey, we're here to check out that book that you read on the last uh, Book Nook show. That's great. That's how we know uh, it's working. Our purpose behind the show is being fulfilled. It's also especially rewarding to me um, to hear of not only people watching it and viewing it with their kids in their homes, but maybe also using it in their classrooms. I have a lot of friends who are teachers and we've connected again uh, via Facebook and a lot of these teachers are telling me that they're airing Book Nook in their classrooms and sharing it with their young students. Um, so that's especially rewarding to me. Patrons who I've become very close with, friends with, who have moved away and they were sad that they were no longer going to be able to tune in to check it out, but lo and behold now they can because again the BPTV staff is so wonderful and they upload our episodes to YouTube as well, so now she watches them on the web with her children um, in Kentucky or wherever it might be. So it is very, uh, very rewarding. We're not only sharing these stories, these special books with kids here in Bethel Park, but we're sharing them with kids across the United States. My name is Elaine Volpe, Head of Youth Services at the Bethel Park Public Library and producer of Miss Elaine's Book Nook on BPTV. back to the Neil Haley Show, second segment, interesting uh, conversation with Daniel Pewter, WWE and MMA star uh, with his now his nonprofit organization, My Life, My Power. So Daniel, again, we all look at different circumstances. Look at myself, pro wrestler, went back, became a teacher, uh, then an entrepreneur, and then had my own radio and TV show that we kind of look at our experiences in wrestling and trying to take those experiences 
to daily life, to, to, to bring the excitement, to bring different things. So tell me about why you started this nonprofit. Yeah, so we started the nonprofit about five years ago so that we could originally stop bullying. And then we went to drugs and gangs and this mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And, you know, in America, we're number one, for instance, in, in per capita for prisoners, right? Okay. And we have the largest military in the world. We, uh, we're number one pharmaceutical drugs. Uh, and, and so you look at some of these things that we're number one in. And, and you know, we're, we're also, um, I think it was like 100 and we're above 100 out of 150 countries in happiness, right? So, uh, so you, we're one of the, like the most drugged up, imprisoned, unhappy countries in the world. Oh and I'm gosh. like, how do we create more value and fulfillment and, 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 and help our future generations? love their life mm -hmm. instead of committing suicide from being bullied instead of right. going to drugs for a fast fix right how do we do this and so what we did was we started going around to schools asking their biggest challenges and, right. and we we had kids that said they were being raped and beat and, oh and homeless and mm -hmm. you know no food and and just like the like america this, this is america like we're you know it's just incredible that, that a lot of these things can happen in our country and so it's because we haven't, we've spent time on stuff instead of love. Okay. Like my parents wanted to give me more, their parents wanted to give them more mm -hmm. stuff. And they thought about how do you build a bit better career? How do you get more educated? How do you do, you know, it's just about what, what can you, how do you, how do you have a better retirement, right? right? And it's all focused about like long term, which is a great thing, but you got to enjoy the moment. You got to, you got to build community. You got to love each other for who you are. And so we created a peer mentorship curriculum that is evidence-based now. We've been in 32 states and 10 countries. Wow. We're working with groups like the FBI, DEA, Homeland mm -hmm. Security, local law enforcement, working with the White House. We're working uh, – we just became right. a university college course really? starting in the fall at Nova Southeastern University. It is the first peer mentorship uh, university three-unit credit course, three credit, three credit course in the country. And so we're, we're working to not only work with the educators and law enforcement and parents to make them understand how to help their kids create more value and fulfillment in their life, but we're also working with students in the schools consistently with a year-round program, um, which, which most programs don't do. Right. So we not only educate and train the mentors, like I was just at a school today in Broward, Broward School District uh, in Florida, and they said, hey, we started a mentor program. We're doing great. We don't have a curriculum, and we've never trained our mentors. And so we specialize in training mentors. We specialize in, in then getting some of these high-energy kids that, you know, either are in juvenile hall or that, you know, have challenges, major challenges in their life. And we help these educators understand how to change their mindset. Um, and so we, we created this, and then off the we created the Miles for Power Entertainment because a lot of people go out and they ask for money as a nonprofit, and they say, hey, give me 10 bucks, give me 20 bucks. Well, 10, 20 bucks, if you got a lot of people throwing in 10, 20 bucks, right. you, can, you can really do a lot. But these days, you know, a lot of people, um, they're going away from that model, and, and they're, it's more of the um, social entrepreneurship model. Right. So it's, it's how do you buy, like, a ticket to a pro wrestling event, and how does that support a kid for a year? Oh, that's interesting. So that's a really interesting thing, Daniel. What are you trying to get me back in the ring? Just kidding, Daniel. Well, I'll come out and, uh, <laughs> and, and work you and put you over in some, one of your uh, towns. So basically adding the specific portion of this, Daniel, that, uh, that people buy a ticket to a pro wrestling event to help raise money for your organization is very interesting. So what are you doing in that way? Explain that to us and what organization are you working with in that process to help raise that money? What, what, like what type of wrestling events? Yeah, so we're going to do four wrestling events. The first one is Houston, June 21st, this month, um, at the Pasadena Convention Center. And so we, uh, we just picked our, um, um, we, we basically put together a whole card. We've been working for the last three, four months on, on putting it together. The second event's going to be in L.A., it looks like, in September, and the third event's uh, in uh, South Florida. And uh, we're looking at a fourth event. Uh, I think it's going to be Arizona or Washington, D.C. It might be Mexico, too. But we're working on some different events. We're, we're bringing in local talent. And then we're going to fly a couple bigger names in each event. Um, my sponsor, one of our big national sponsors, is called ResetSupplement.com. Okay. And so 
every event, we just did a tag team challenge, and um, we're going to do a press release later today. Um, but we just picked uh, two, um, two, two guys. They're based actually in Florida. Um, but they, it's just an amazing story on what they do and why they do it, why they wrestle, why they want to help kids, why they want to serve the community. You know, and so we're working a lot with, with um, good talent. I, I don't care if you're the biggest guy, the buffest guy, the, right. you know, the, the, the best wrestler in the world. What I want is I want to help uh, pro wrestlers right. and other athletes become um, – because a lot of guys don't get paid that much when they're on the indie scene. Right. So well, I know that be, for sure. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to be helping them um, understand how to build their brand, build their social brand online, and then also build their fan base, and then take that and then use their speaking ability, and we're going to teach them how to speak more and, and work with them on that, and we're going to basically start booking them in schools, um, to to go to uh, assemblies across the country. That's great. That's a, such a great idea for sure. And uh, what big? So you're so you're back. You're get back in the ring. Then I saw that in the YouTube. Then right. You're going to be wrestling yeah, yeah. as well. Yes, I will. I'm going to be uh, main event with uh, Major Mark, and then it's a tag team challenge that we're going to announce later today. I'll actually send you the press release um, right when I send it out to our publicist. So. Well, fantastic. And so, did you think when you were starting this? Uh, Organizations, nonprofit, you were going to bring back wrestling again? No, 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 no. <laughs> you know what's funny is, you know, I, everything I do is for a purpose. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just don't wrestle to wrestle. I wrestle to make an impact uh, on our generations, you know? So, you know, anybody can do anything to, to just mm -hmm. do it, but I really want to see a result at the end of the day. And so that was one of the big things that I talked to my, my board about. And I talked to some of my advisors and mentors, and I said, how do we? You know, what do you guys think about this? How do we rebuild America and, and get it to where it should be? You know, and, and they said, well, go back to wrestling. So I said, I love it. Let's, let's do it. Um, it's all, it always goes back to wrestling, Daniel. Don't you understand that? It, it, it doesn't matter what we did all our lives. We're always the pro wrestler. I don't Correct. get that. I don't get it. It's <laughs> I know, I know, I know. That, that's it's the conversation. Though. That's the different thing. So the big events and the big venues you're working in, basically you're looking at is bringing talent that's going to put on a good show, but also a family-oriented show because of what the whole message is then, right? Correct? Correct. And that's a big thing that, that we're kind of uh, playing down, you know, the, you know, a lot of different shows and, and on some of the TV shows, you know, it's a little more sexy and a little bit more violence. We're going to tone that down just a little bit, but we're going to have great entertainment. These wrestlers that we're picking, we're handpicking them in different areas, and each city has plenty of wrestlers. Um, but we're, we're handpicking them, we're working with different promoters, um, and we're, we're having a lot of fun. So it's, it's going to be a great show June 21st at the Pasadena Convention Center. Fantastic. And so once you send me the press release, we'll know the different lineup. So are you partnering with any other big names, Daniel, in this, in this, in this, in these events, these four events? You, you know what? If I'm going to send you a whole list of wrestlers uh, that we're, that we're partnering with. We got some guys from uh, TNA. Uh, we got some uh, couple ex WWE guys. So it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to see we're partnering with each event. We're partnering actually with different promoters in, the, in the individual cities because I not only want to, it's not about us just creating something and trying to out-promote somebody else. It's us uh, working with local talent and helping those local pro wrestling companies get to that next level. You know, because if I can take five guys in each city and have them do 20, 30 assemblies a year, right. now they can make more money that they, than they ever have. They're going to make more money than they actually get paid to wrestle. And, and they're going to they're gonna have a better life. They're going to work harder. They're going to be in the gym more because now they're actually doing more of what they love to do every day. And they're making a difference. When I got to doing autographs and different tours in Canada and Germany and working with the kids and doing the Polaroids and all that stuff, it was fantastic. And to be able to do those talks and teach them how to talk and about making the right choices in life and the right decisions is so key, Daniel, and developing and growing everything that you're doing for sure. It's a, it's you know, a great, one it's great thing, story. Yeah. One, what, yeah, and one other thing that, that I, I can just throw at you, we can give out um, a couple tickets. I'll, I'll put a couple names on a list. So if you have a couple people in Houston 
uh, that want to come to the event. I will uh, win the tickets however you want to do it. I'll give uh, you two tickets. So I was just thinking about, you know, people that are listening to this and they want to come out, um, you know, apply for it. All right. Well, fantastic. We'll definitely uh, stay in touch and figure out how the promotion. So the first and the next event is going to be, in, you said, in California or is it in Houston? Which one's the event in June? The first, first event is Houston uh, area Pasadena Convention Center, uh, June 21st. June 21st. Then you're going to be in California, you said, in September, correct? Yep, yep, we're working on the dates right now. Because it airs different times, like our television show will air at this time, and then the radio show will air at this time, Daniel. So it was great talking to you. Where's the best place we can find information on you? Where can we go? Go to mylifemypower.org or go to mylifemypowerentertainment.org. Uh, or if you want to see about me personally, you go to danielpewter.com. It's funny how wrestling comes back to you. So you're like, uh -huh. you never thought you'd go back in the ring after you went on to a different career after your experiences in the WWE and then also working some other indies and then bam, you're back again. So it's interesting and, but you're doing it to make a difference. That's the important thing. You're using your gifts and talents in the ring and promoting from learning from promoters and now promoting something that's going to help kids. And that's great. So thanks again for calling Daniel. You got it. Have a great day. Thank All you right. very much. All right, bye. All right, that was Daniel Pewter, and a uh, great show again, Neil Haley Show. Again, go to my website, tolltutor.net, for more information. Tour Toll Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Toll Tutor, Pinterest, Neil Haley, and Google Plus, Neil Haley. And uh, we're going to continue to have great uh, guests and interviews on the Neil Haley Show. And uh, really liked our conversation with Daniel. You, you can hashtag Neil Haley Show live tweet all the different things. Should I go back to be a professional wrestler? I'll bring that out to you and see if that ever happens. If there's an event near me that will help raise money, you never know if I'll do that kind of PR. If Daniel could do it, I could do it. Well, Daniel's a little younger. But uh, good talk, you guys, and we'll talk next week. Good day, everyone. Hello America, Mr. Bold speaking. I issued an ice bucket challenge to my good friend Darth Vader, and given his ego and celebrity status, I was sure that he would take the challenge. But if he doesn't show up in the next minute or two, I'm going to have to do it myself. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Nice towel. And I said a bucket challenge, that's a cup! Don't make me destroy you. What are you waiting for, you big sissy? It is pointless to resist. I can't believe you just force soaked me! All to reason. You're not such a bad guy after all, old buddy. Accepted. The Ice Bucket Challenge has done a great job of raising awareness for ALS and many other noteworthy charities. If you have an Ice Bucket Challenge or some other cause you would like to bring attention to, Darth Vader and yours truly, Mr. Bold, would like you to come to VPTV and will gladly help you make a program or promo or share your existing video with the community. We would be honored if you would join us.